So I want you to look at me in the book of Hosea tonight for just a few moments, the book of Hosea. And uh, we'll read just a few verses here. The preacher tells me you got revival meeting coming up. And I'm thanking the Lord for revival. Amen. We need revival. I need it in my heart. And uh, I pray the Lord will give it to us and help us. Hosea, right after the book of Daniel, if you have an old Schofield, it's on page 921. And I'll read a few verses here, starting in Hosea chapter 1. And we'll read verse 2. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblium, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel. For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again, and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, Call her name Lo-Ruhana, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them by the Lord their God and will not save them by bow nor by sword nor by battle, by horses nor by horsemen. And when she had weaned lo Ruhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, call his name Lo-Ami, for ye are not my people and I will not be your God. I want to preach to you for a moment tonight on the heart of God. And I want to use this account here in the book of Hosea. I want want us to consider this tonight and keep this in our minds. When we read the book of Hosea, there are 14 chapters, and we're reading about the rebellion and the wandering of Israel. And I'll talk to you about that. But there are two stories in this little uh, minor prophet that are woven together. There are two stories going on at the same time. There is the story of God's relationship with his people and there is the story of Hosea the prophet and his relationship with his wife. And both of them are mirror images of one another. And we can learn something about our relationship with God, how it ought to be by looking at the relationships in this passage. I want to say to you three things about this passage tonight. First of all, I want to talk to you about the wandering heart of a nation. We have in the book of Hosea, God reveals to us that his nation Israel, whom he has redeemed, is wandering in their love, wandering away from their God. If you read the book of Amos, Amos will tell us something about what's going on in Israel at this time and in the nations around I wrote some of the things the Bible will tell us. Uh, he'll, Amos later on will talk about Damascus and their sin is cruelty and then Gaza in Philistia and their sin is the slave trade and then Tyre in Phoenicia and their sin is slavery and violation of covenant. In other words, promising you one thing and giving you something else. And then Edom, their sin was a vengeful and an unforgiving spirit. And then the children of Ammon, their chief sins were cruelty and greed and then he'll mention the sin of Moab and their chief sin was vindictive hatred and then he'll talk about Judah and he'll say they have despised the law of God broken his commandments and caused the people to err through lies then when Amos is done preaching he will get to Israel and here's what he'll say he charges them with seven sins now, these are the same things that are going on in the days of Hosea he'll charge them with injustice he'll charge them with avarice, greed. He'll charge them with oppression. He'll charge them with immorality. He'll charge them with profanity, with blasphemy, and with sacrilege. And the sin of Israel is worse than all the sins of those heathen nations because they know better, because they know God, because they have a more privileged position. When I read about these sins that Amos speaks of and that Hosea makes reference to. I get this idea. The Lord is interested 
in how we treat one another. He's interested in that. So we have a nation that is wandering away from God. Concerning the present, they have abused their privilege. They are the chosen people of God. They know the truth. They have had revelation. God has spoken to them. God has sent them prophets. And yet they choose to sin. They are abusing their privilege. Sins against light. Not sins of ignorance. Not sin because I didn't know. But sin even though I did know. Though I knew better. And then concerning the past, they have not heeded his chastening. When they sinned in the past, God would chasten them to try and bring them back. And they did not heed that chastening. They took it perhaps as coincidence. And then concerning the future, God will bring judgment upon them. He'll do it five visions he'll talk about in Hosea. The vision of the grasshoppers devouring the land. The, uh, the vision of the fire uh, devouring the land. He uses an unusual vision, a plumb line. How many of you know what a plumb line is? They laid it, uh, the, the old plumb line had a string and a weight on the end and you'd hold it up and you could tell whether something was straight or crooked and God said, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pass through Israel. I'm gonna lay the plumb line next to you and you can say all you want to, but if you don't match up with the plumb line, then you're crooked, you're not straight. He'll talk about summer fruit rotting on the vine and he'll talk about God standing over the altar. So throughout the book of Hosea, God is dealing with the sins of Israel. That's one story. But here's the other story I'm interested in. In verse number two, God says to the prophet, the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms. Now let me stop right there. Some writers that I read have said that God has told Hosea to go find a harlot and marry her. But that cannot be true because he'll continue and say this. Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. And the children have not been born yet. They're going to be born. We're going to read about them. So what God is saying to the prophet, go get you a wife of Israel. Because Israel as a nation has committed whoredoms against God. And so when he says a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, he's saying to Hosea, go marry an Israelite. I have, a, I have something to say to them. And so Gomer goes out and he finds a wife. Her name is Hosea. Or her, or Hosea finds a wife. His, her name is Gomer. And the word Gomer is an interesting word. It means completion. How many of you heard along the way that the wife is called the completer in the home? And so Hosea finds this woman, Gomer. It mentions her father, where she comes from. I don't know what the courtship was like. I don't know how long it took. I don't know what all was involved. I know courtship in those days was a different matter than it is today. In that day, the parents would get together. They would make an agreement. The, 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 the groom and the groom's family would pay the dowry. By the way, whatever happened to that? I've been wondering about that. Looks to me like the father of the bride's foot in the whole bill, and I don't think that's biblical. But anyway... And so the, the arrangements are made and uh, the day comes and the Jewish wedding takes place and Hosea has himself a wife. Her name is Gomer. The Bible tells us, remember now, two stories going along together, intertwined together. The Bible said she bare him a son. I bet that was a glad day. It was a glad day at the house when that boy was born. I bet it was a glad day for Hosea and a glad day for Gomer when she presented him with that son. And then God says, call his name Jezreel. He said, judgment is coming. So every time someone would say to Gomer or to Hosea, uh, what's the name mean? What's this Jezreel? What's it about? And it would give Hosea a chance to preach. He said, God told me to name this boy Jezreel because God is going to bring judgment on Israel. Remember, two stories intertwined together. So I don't know how the marriage is going, but there's a son born. That's a good sign. 
Then the Bible says this in verse 6. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, call her name Lohurama. Now watch this. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. Two stories intertwined together. So here is one day Gomer and Hosea have this son and God pronounces judgment on Israel and then a little girl comes along and God says, name her no pity. You know what I think? Two stories intertwined together. Something's going on in the relationship of Hosea and Gomer. And what's going on in their relationship is a reflection of what's going on between God and Israel. Somewhere along the line, Gomer has ceased to speak kind words to her husband, Hosea. Somewhere along, she has seemingly lost her interest in him until the point where God would say of that relationship, she has no pity on him. She doesn't care about him. She doesn't spend time with him anymore. She doesn't speak to him anymore. There's not a kind word that comes out of her mouth in reference to her husband. Something's not right. Maybe there are whispers around about this relationship. I can think of Gomer and his, as she's wandering in her thoughts and in her mind and in her heart. And I think of Hosea and I think about the breaking of his heart. The woman that he courted, the woman that he's married, the woman that has become his, the woman that now has borne him two children. God says she has no mercy on him. She cares nothing for him anymore. Can you imagine what the home has become now? What it is like now? Can you imagine the broken heart of Hosea? I'm thinking about a young couple I know of right now where what happened in this passage happened in their marriage. I'm thinking about what the young man said to me about words that his wife had used and said to him, and I remember distinctly, I remember like as yesterday, the brokenness of his heart, broken over how she treated him, broken over what she said to him, broken over how she finally left him. The Bible said another son comes along. I want you to notice what they call him. Now, when she had weaned Lo Ruhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, remember, two stories entwined together. Then said God, call his name Lo Am I. The word means not my son. For ye are not my people. I will not be your God. I don't know if. Hosea has heard whispers. I don't know if Hosea has come across some hidden handwritten note. I don't know how it all came about, but when Hosea looks at this second boy, this little boy, Hosea said, it's not mine. She's been unfaithful. And when we read on in the passage in the book, we find that she goes after other lovers. She leaves him alone. There's no pretense for a little while. There was at least a pretense in her life that she was his wife. But that pretense now is gone. She doesn't cover it anymore. She doesn't hide it anymore. Not only does she have no pity on him, she has nothing for him. She has been unfaithful. If you read on in the book of Hosea, and we won't take time all the way through here, but you'll read that she plays the part of a harlot. She goes out and she has other lovers, other men. She spends time with them. She won't go home until uh, a little later in chapter 2. Uh, Hosea gets the children together and he said, go plead with your mother. Go tell her to come home. Go beg her. Go plead with her. Apparently she won't listen to anything that Hosea has to say. She is unfaithful. She has wandered. Can you imagine Hosea's heart? Can you imagine how broken he must be when he looked into that eyes of that little boy and then looked in the eyes of his wife and said, it's not mine. You've been unfaithful. 
And she leaves the house and leaves the family and abandons them all and goes out and lives a life of wickedness and ungodliness. What a broken heart Hosea must have had. Have you ever looked into the face of an abandoned spouse? Have you ever heard them tell about the brokenness in their life and the hurt? I remember one day preaching in a meeting in Tennessee and a lady came up to me after the service. She shook my hand. She introduced herself. I didn't ask her any questions. I didn't initiate the conversation, but she began to tell me about her unfaithful husband. I could see the hurt in her eyes. I could hear the pain in her voice. Imagine Hosea's life. Imagine his heart. He had sought her out and found her and took her to be his and took care of her and loved her. And now look how she's done him. A broken man. then I want you to see a third heart. Not just the heart of a wandering nation and the heart of a wounded husband, but I want you to see the heart of a wonderful God because we have two stories entwined together. And God is telling us by showing us the broken heart of Hosea He's telling us about his broken heart when we wander, when we sin, when we are unfaithful to our God. James uses this same imagery in the New Testament when he says, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship with the world is enmity with God. And so I find that to be a friend of the world makes me a spiritual adulterer to the God that saved me. When the world becomes of more importance and the things of the world become of more importance than the God who saved me, I'm guilty of spiritual whoredom and harlotry and adultery. In Hosea 2, Hosea wants somebody to plead with Gomer to come home. Now, you listen to me. Even after he has looked in the face of that little boy and said, he's not mine. She's been unfaithful. He's not mine. Even after that, Hosea does not say, I'm through with her. I'm done with her. I'm finished with her. Hosea says, plead with her. Plead with her to come back. You want to talk about a heart of love. You want to talk about a God of mercy. After all that God has done for us, after he saved us from our sin and made us accepted in the beloved, saved our soul, gave us the Holy Ghost, sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise and blessed us day after day after day. And we wonder, looks like God would say, I'm through. I'm done. I've had enough. But remember, two stories entwined together. Hosea doesn't say, I'm finished with that wicked woman. He said, tell her I want her to come home. Can I say something to you tonight? If you have wandered in your heart from God, do you know what his words would be to you? Please come home. Please come home. If there's sin in your life, his words are to you, please leave it behind. Please come home. The pleading heart of this man. Not only does he plead with her, he provides for her even in the middle of her wickedness. 
The Bible says in Hosea 2, 7, she shall follow after her lovers, but she shall not overtake them. And she shall seek them, but she shall not find them. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then was it better with me than now. For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold, which they prepared for Baal. Do you get the picture here? Here she is. Uh, here she is uh, with some other man being unfaithful. And here comes Hosea. He loves her so much. He's blessing her and providing her with things even in the middle of her sin. Do you understand how good God has been to you even when you've been unfaithful? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And even when I'm not what I'm supposed to be, God is always what he said he would be. And then in Hosea chapter 3, look at verse 2. So I bought her. I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver, for an omer of barley, and then half omer of barley. Now here's what happened. She's run off. She's left the family. She's left the two children that belonged to Hosea and the one that didn't. She's abandoned them all. She's been out here living a wicked life and an ungodly life. She's been out here uh, committing adultery and as the Bible puts it, whoredoms and living like a harlot. She's been out there doing that. And you know what's happened to her? What always happens with sin, she's got to the bottom. She's become a slave. She thought, I'll be free of my husband. I'll live any way I want to. And now everything is gone. She has nothing left. Hosea's walking down the street one day and he hears the slave auction going on. He hears the auctioneer auctioning off someone and must be, must be somebody was not very important. There weren't a lot of bids. There weren't a lot of high money. But he comes along and when he turns the corner, he looks and there she is. I can see her on her knees on the slave block. Her, she's she's uh, tattered. She's ruined. She's, uh, she has worn away her life with sin and ungodliness. And she looks up and he looks in her eyes and he sees that it's her. And they're about to sell her for maybe just a little bit. And Hosea says, said, no, no, wait. And he begins to bid and he bids and he buys her to take her home. I'm going to tell you it's a story of a love that never quits, a love that never ends, a love that never gives up, a love that is greater than sin, a love that abounds. That's the story. That's the way God loves you. That's the way he cares about you. You say, preacher, you don't know where I've been. No, you don't know what I've done. I don't, but God does, and he loves you anyway and wants you back. He wants you home. You know what he did tonight? He sent me by to plead with you, to plead with you to give up your sin, to plead with you to turn away from the things that are ungodly and wicked in your life and come home. Here's what he said. He said, so I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for an omer of barley and a half omer of barley. And I said unto her, thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot. Thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for thee. Here's what he said. He said, if you'll come home with me, I'll be for you and you be for me. I will be like it was. I'll restore it the way it was. We'll have a wonderful relationship. Can I say to you, that's what God would offer a wandering saint today. He said, preacher, it can't ever be like it was. Do you remember the prodigal son? Do you remember what he said? He said, I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto my father, father, I've sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. But you know what happened when he was yet a long way off? His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But before he could get that make me a hired servant business out, the father said, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. He said, kill the fatted calf for this my son was dead and alive again. He was lost and he was found. You know what that son thought? It can never be like it was 
was before. But Daddy said it's going to be like it was before. Uh, you're going to get back in the big house. We're going to have what we had. Can I say to you, that's what Hosea wanted for Gomer, and that's what God wants for you. Amen. Preacher, I've gone too far. Gomer had gone pretty far. Preacher, I've sunk too low. Gomer had sunk pretty low. Preacher, I've done too much. Gomer had done way too much. But here's what Hosea said. I bought her. I bought her back. And I took her home and I said to her, you be for me and I'll be for you. Why don't you come tonight and get on your knees at an altar and hear God say, you be for me and I'll be for you. We can have a relationship. We can have joy. We can have restoration. We can restore the years that the canker worm have eaten. In Hosea 13, 9, God said this, O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. You know what the devil will say to you? You've messed up. You've done wrong. And it's nobody's fault but your own. And God doesn't care anything about you. Well, let me tell you something about Gomer. She had messed up. She'd done wrong. And it was nobody's fault but her own. But Hosea still came by the slave block and paid the price that nobody else would pay and said, come home with me. And I'm saying to you tonight, no matter how far you are from God, no matter what sin is in your life, you say, preacher, I've wandered far away. I'm not where I should be. Then why don't you get up and come home? God's waiting for you. He is saying to you, you may have destroyed yourself, but it's in me to help you. God wants you back. He wants that relationship you once had. He wants you to be close again. You know what David said in Psalm 51? He said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I don't think David would have prayed that unless he felt like God was able to do that. He's able to do it for you tonight if you're willing to come back. I want you to bow your heads a moment. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Tonight, if you feel far away from God and you know in your heart there's things that are not right and it's not like it once was and spiritually speaking, you've wandered and played the harlot, why don't you come home? Why don't you come home? That's what God wants. I don't, it's none of my business where you've been or what you've done. It's nobody else's business, but it's between you and God. Why don't you come home? Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. Somebody, nobody's looking but me. Somebody, somebody say, preacher, it's not like it once was with me and God. It's not like it once was. And I want it to be again. Would you pray for me? It's not like it once was between me and the Lord. Would you remember me when you pray? I see that hand. There's somebody else. I see another hand. Is there somebody else? I see another. You, you say, well, preacher, I haven't been off in adultery. and those. Guys. I'm just saying it's not like it was. It's not like it once was. You say, preacher, pray for me. I'm not where I once was with God. Will you pray for me? Is there anybody else tonight? All right, let's do this. Won't you come home? Won't you just come home tonight? Nobody need know where you've been. All we're interested in is will you come home? That's what God's interested in. Will you come home? Father, help us tonight. There may be somebody lost in the service. There may be somebody just away from you. But Lord, remind all of us what sin does to your heart. And Lord, even if we're walking close to you right now, would you help us to remember the broken heart of Hosea? 
and let it cause us to never want to break your heart like Gomer broke his heart, like Israel broke the heart of God. Would you help us, Lord? If there's somebody here lost without God, I pray that they'll come and trust you as their Savior. Help us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand to our feet a moment. Some have come and gone already, but God dealt with your heart. Whether you're wandering or whether you're not, but God dealt with your heart. Won't you come tonight? Bow your knee at an altar. Somebody just ought to come get on their knees and say, Lord, I don't ever want to do to you what Gomer did to Hosea. I don't ever want to do to you what Israel did to you. Don't let me do that, Lord. Help me. Somebody ought to just come and say that to God tonight on their knees at an altar. God, deal with your heart while our sister plays. You come. Come right now. Come on. While we're waiting. Come on. Don't wait. 